Good morning, and uh, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, as he uh, indicated, we are listed on the AIM section, so we do have a legal disclaimer because this presentation will include forward-looking statements. Um, and as a business, we are focused on research and development. We've got two key programmes. We were actually founded in 2004 as a spin-out from the University of Oxford. And the two programmes we've got are, are looking at Duchenne muscular dystrophy and C. difficile infection. And I'll talk a little bit about both of those and why we're very excited about those over the next 24 months or so. And we're actually in a very strong financial position because we completed last month a £22 million fundraise. And in addition to that, our programmes are also receiving additional support. For example, the Wellcome Trust are backing our C. diff programme through a £4 million translational award, which will take us through phase two. And the UK government, through their biomedical strategy initiative organised by the Technology Strategy Board, have provided a £2.4 million grant to us, which will again support ongoing work over the next couple of years. So we're in a very healthy position there. But the first programme that I want to talk about is our C. diff programme, it's our novel antibiotic for this. And C. diff infection itself, just a bit of the background, is a really serious healthcare threat. Um, that was highlighted by a number of reports, and you can see here this quote from the US Department for Health and Human Services that said it requires urgent and aggressive action. And there's actually been backed up by legislation that's been passed in the US to encourage companies to develop new antibiotics for C. diff. And the reason why this is serious is there have been a rise in cases at around 900,000 per year and is associated with huge healthcare costs. And the acute costs alone in the US are estimated at $4.8 billion per annum. So that's a major problem. The disease itself is caused by prior antibiotic use. What happens is, is you take your antibiotic often for another indication and that has a very detrimental impact on your natural gut flora, which provides a protective effect. It is in that environment that C. difficile will, will outbreak. You get more broad-spectrum antibiotic to treat the infection, but often that will cause more disruption to your gut flora and increase the risk of recurrent disease. And it's the disease coming back which is the real threat here. And that's what we're looking to address with our antibiotic. Our drug's called SMT 19969, and we believe this has the ideal profile to be an effective treatment, not only in the initial infection, but also in preventing recurrent disease. And I'm just going to go through very quickly a little bit of data on that to highlight why we are very excited about this as a, as a potential antibiotic. On this slide here, what we're showing is that it's potent for C. diff, that's very important, and we're comparing this with the three other drugs that are on the market called uh, Fodaxomycin's drug, uh, metronidazole and vancomycin, and you can see we're actually slightly more potent than those. But where we really start to differentiate ourselves is in our selectivity. And I mentioned the importance of, of your, your healthy gut flora and maintaining that. And what we're showing on this slide here is green is good because it means you're having a very minimal antibiotic effect. It means you're leaving the key bacterial uh, classes in your gut flora unharmed. They're, they're intact. And when you compare our drug with the other ones in development, you can see that they're very active for those. That's highlighted by the red. Uh, and they're the three drugs on markets. And, and that's why you have a problem with C. diff, is because they're not selective. So we've shown we're potent and we've shown that we're selective and that's very encouraging. We've also done some work in a, a, an animal model of the disease. Uh, it's a very serious model because if you can see here by, by this line down here, when left untreated, the animals will all die. When they take vancomycin, you are effective in treating the initial infection, but once you stop taking drug, the disease comes back in around 60% of the animals and they will die as well. But when we took our drug, 19969, it treated both the initial infection and it was also sparing of all animals in that recurrent disease phase. And that's really, again, very encouraging. It's backing up what we've seen from the potency and its selectivity. The drug itself has been in humans. We've done a phase one trial last year and it was safe and well tolerated and that's really important for antibiotics. We also uh, highlighted that the drug was targeted to the site of the infection, which is in your GI tract. But we were also able to measure the impact that 19969 had on the gut flora of the volunteers. So while they were not C. diff positive, they do have a representative gut bacteria like you do, which is nice and healthy. And what we saw here is that the key classes were largely unharmed, with one exception. And that was total clostridia, which was reduced to levels below detection when treating with the drug. 
and that shows that we are being highly sparing and that selectivity profile we've seen earlier was very good with the only bacterial class that we're hurting being the one that C. difficile belongs to total clostridia. So it's really encouraging when we move forward into phase two trials, which is what we're doing now. Uh, last month we got the green light from the US FDA to commence a phase two study. This will be a 100 patient trial. Uh, it will be conducted in Canada and, and, and the US and we'll be looking to uh, show the clinical benefit of our antibiotic in patients. It's going to be a relatively short trial, so we hope to report data on this during the first half of 2015, so not very far away. And as I said, the whole programme continues to be supported by the Wellcome Trust through this translational award. But the second programme, which is quite different but very exciting and has a, 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 a much more depth to it as well because we're developing more than one product here. And they're all based around eutrophic modulation for a disease called Duchenne muscular dystrophy. This is a fatal genetic disorder for which there's currently no cure. It's caused by a whole host of different genetic faults on the, on the gene that makes a protein called dystrophin. And it means that it only actually affects boys because this is on the X chromosome. In the, in the world, there's around 50,000 boys in the, the developed world with this condition, so it's classed as one of these orphan or rare indications, which means you can qualify for additional regulatory support and periods of market exclusivity through extended patent protection. The disease has a really significant social and, and economic cost as well, and it was estimated in the US alone that it costs around $780 million a year in, in, in direct and indirect healthcare costs. So this is a real serious problem that needs to be treated. Now, I mentioned this protein called dystrophin, and that's a really important structural protein in our muscles. And if you take a, a muscle fibre and take a cross-section, it's very much similar to a trampoline, where you've got the inner part of the trampoline connected to the frame by springs. In a muscle fibre, the inner part is connected to the, the outer part of the muscle fibre by this protein called dystrophin. DMD boys cannot make dystrophin which means that over time their muscles will progressively waste away. It will leave them in eating wheelchairs during their teenage years and their life expectancy is around late 20s. So it's a really debilitating disease. It affects every muscle in their body. However, the body also makes another protein called eutrophin, which performs exactly the same function when a muscle fibre is developing. What our approach is looking to do is maintain the production of this eutrophin protein because DMD boys make eutrophin in the same way we do. So when a muscle fibre is developing, it's eutrophin that is first expressed. When the fibre matures, eutrophin is turned off by the body, dystrophin comes along and you have a healthy fibre. DMD boys, they make the eutrophin, but when it's turned off, there is no dystrophin. So what we're wanting to do is maintain that eutrophin to substitute for the dystrophin. Now our research programme has been based upon pioneering academic work from the University of Oxford and this was one of the things that we were formed many years ago to take forward from, from academic research into identifying an ineffective medicine. Our programme is split into two core areas. We've got our lead candidate called SMTC 1100 that is currently in a, a phase 1B clinical trial in DMD boys and we expect to report data from that during the second quarter of this year and then move on into a, a longer term efficacy study to identify if the drug works in patients. But we're also developing next generation molecules and this will en enable us to have a strong pipeline in the future. So this really is a, an area where we are the world leaders as Eutrophin, we're the only company working on this space in clinical trials and we've got the key academics. We uh, announced last year a new strategic alliance with the University of Oxford which provided access to new technologies they had been working on. So we're in a very, very strong position. But I mentioned earlier there's only 50,000 boys with this disease and therefore is this actually a commercial viable opportunity and the answer to this is yes. Firstly our approach is the only one in clinical trials that would treat all of the patients. The other approaches are looking at the dystrophin gene and therefore it's actually very fragmented so the largest drug that could treat boys would only be applicable to 13% of the market. Eutrophin we think will apply to all boys, we also think it will be complementary to the other approaches in development. In addition to that, this is an orphan drug, and that means you can command orphan pricing. Um, I've listed on this slide some examples of what orphan drugs cost per year, per patient. And a good example here is Vertex's drug called Kaleidico that was recently launched for cystic fibrosis, which is a similar genetic condition for children, which has an annual price tag per patient of just under $300,000. So that is why we believe that an effective DMD drug will be a multi-billion dollar selling product. 
And indeed, actually 29% of orphan drugs achieve blockbuster status. So it's borne out by statistics. It's not just our view. So we're at a very exciting stage in our development. Both programs are in patient trials, and we're expecting to read data out from these uh, over the next two years, which will be key development milestones, which will add significant value to their assets. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're now well funded, having completed that fundraise. So it means there's a, a good opportunity for growth from where we are. We've got a market cap of around 70 million pounds. If you take a look over in the US at a company called Sarepta, who are working in the DMD space on a dystrophin drug, which will only treat 13% of the market with patient data, they are now valued in excess of a billion dollars. There was always a disconnection between us and the US, but you can see why we believe that there, there is significant opportunity here if we can generate good data in our phase two trials, which we'll be conducting over the next 12 to 24 months. So that concludes my sort of presentation and overview of the company. We are here today, we've got uh, a stand, so do come and visit us and I'm happy to answer questions and talk more about the program and the company in detail. And so we're on stand 10 and it just remains for me to thank you very much for your attention this morning.